In honor of Mother's Day, the mug hey, I'm drinking good. from says, sometimes when I open my mouth, I open my, my mouth, mouth and, and my mind. mother falls out. Welcome to a laborious episode of the Friday Night Movie Podcast, because today we have on this wonderful Mother's Day, the guest of guests, our mother is here, and we are going to talk about our birthing stories, which is, and generally pop culture birthing stories. But before that, I have a question for Lily and Becky, because there's something recently they told me that mom did to them. That sort of, I guess, it's a required moment in the in the journey towards um, motherhood in our family. Uh, could you maybe fill me in on the um, the best I can say is slapping that went on in our household in the <laughs> in the nineties? Uh, yeah, definitely in the nineties. There was a tradition uh, when it's not just our family. It's like a this thing hap- that happens this is a thing. around the world. No, I, mean, I all over experienced the place. it in 1964. I remember very well running into mom's room when I got my period for the first time and telling her, and she just slapped me open hand across the face. I remember when I told me. Anuta, and she then- slapped me too. <laughs> <laughs> Anuta also you got a two for yeah. a double slap. I got slapped across Anuta the face, and then you gave me a shot of sherry, I believe, a drink, a, a, yeah. something we to had drink, a schnapps, a schnapps, or something. yeah. I mean, I at least I think you guys might have been prepared for it because I told you my story that I was eleven and a half years old. I mean, I'm pretty sure I knew it happened to Lily, but it was just like my mother bang. walked in the house, and before she put her stuff down and said hello to me she smacked you across the face and then hugged me and i didn't know what was going on so wait what but is it's, this it's for good what luck is the per- oh it's for good it's luck it's like for it's, it's like it's the like poo-poo. breaking the glass it's like on, yeah right it's good like, luck it's like, it's like breaking the glass on um uh, at the wedding, it's the slapping I, of the face. I think it's a wake up call. So, it's like, lady, you're a woman now. Wow. It's about to get real, girl. <laughs> you think that hurts? <laughs> if you you're think about that to hurts, that, I mean, okay. no, you got it. It's usually, yeah. you already got that it. bitch so, doesn't so mess flash around. forward. Let's see. I don't know how many years later. So now we we've, we've, obvi- we've obviously years. did you. You don't want it on the exact <laughs> amount of years exactly. later. <laughs> but mom. We decided that this time, I think this was, was this Lily's idea or Becky's idea? This is Becky's idea that to have you on this time that you might recount what it was like to give birth to each of us, because I feel like people will learn a lot about our personalities from our different births. Oh, oh absolutely. And, um, and each birth was like really different. But don't, don't okay, tell them all so... as long as my birth, because mine was the longest. We could do the abbreviated well, version. No, but the thing is that I have i don't know if it's the privilege or misfortune of having three children i'm very lucky about that but three totally different births like if when people say oh i had this kind of a birth i say i had completely different births my kids all have different personalities and i believe in some ways the journey of birth that laboring to give birth to a child somehow correlates to who they're going to be when they grow up um Shy was not in a rush. He liked being in there. He just, I think he, I used to say he was playing Nintendo and <laughs> eating pretzels or something because he did not want to come out. That was a, uh, what? Dad told my 27 kids hours of labor. I was eating crunchy bars and watching TV shows. Absolutely. 27 hours of labor and then two and a half hours of pushing and he still didn't want to come out. And the doctor had to go and stand on a stool and he took his elbow and he pushed down oh, at the top of my th- belly. This is the 70s. You, like to get a baby no, they, out. They so still do that, that Shai. They still do that. Okay. And he, they, he having saying, a baby is push. barbaric. By then, they I still do push it, Shai. Anymore. I was so done. And he's pushing down and they're trying, and the nurses are pushing my legs up to kind of create the sensation of pushing because I didn't have any more strength. And then they still went to get you with forceps. And it was, it took me, I couldn't sit for about three weeks. I, I was like, I was a mess. But you yeah, were so delicious and you're more. such a good boy. He's I so mean, good. and you've always been such I a good boy. I can't believe after, because she was like, after that, I guess it's, you know, can only go up from here. I don't yeah, know. I don't know how you had more kids baby. after that. 
it's amazing how you forget all that. I can talk about it. But I don't I, forget. It's not like I actually remember all of the pain that I must have felt. I remember. You're such a good baby that it was like, oh, I could do this again. Kind it, of made up for it. it yeah, up. absolutely. Totally. And uh, yeah, I was pretty wrecked. Probably my internal organs were a mess too. Who knows? Um, then um, Lily, true to her form. Ta-da! <laughs> like in the movies my water (laughs) broke except i was in bed just for the record i just want to say a very small percentage of women's water actually break like in the movies it's like 10 percent that's what i'm saying i had three have their water break like in the movies btw just for listeners to be aware of that right but i wasn't in the middle of a a store you know or in the middle of the street you were sleeping and it wasn't like this giant gush it basically was a pop and i didn't know what that was like a soda can yeah, I felt like it, but I felt the pop. Like, I actually, felt a lot of gush. women think they're peeing themselves, and a then I go, "Oh my god, I got to go to the bathroom." A lot, a lot of women are. A lot of pregnant women are peeing going on. These so. days, the doctor tells you, "Sorry, but to say when when your when your water breaks, chances are your water didn't break. You just peed yourself." Well, that had so, happened the two weeks before, right? <laughs> well, I was in the synagogue. They actually, I didn't know this. The <laughs> 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 actually, no, I was I was standing at the um, new information. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great story. We used to go for, for services at, at the JCC because we had our own group. And I'm standing there. And that day, Paul and Margaret, your Aunt Paul, uh, Uncle Paul and Aunt Margaret were there with us. And I'm like, oh, I'm wet. Like, oh, maybe my water broke because I was only two weeks from delivering. And I, Paul says, I'll take you to the hospital. I'll get to the hospital. And they said, nah, your water didn't break. You just <laughs> leaked. <Peter's laughs> <home. laughs> Send me home. Tinkled. But anyway, two weeks later. It wait, wait, can I just, another fun fact. I just think we should just keep giving audiences fun, the audience fun facts. They now sell like, like a maxi pad that you can wear that if it changes color, you know, it's your water breaking and not pee. Oh, that's cool. So that well, you don't have to go to the hospital. I didn't smell it. So that's You're going to need, instead of like explicit warning for this episode, you're going to need a gross warning for this anyway, episode. So, um, so anyway, so the, I called the doctor and it's like, you know, 1030 at night. And he says to me, well, maybe your water broke, but you know, just give it some time. I wasn't having any contractions or anything. And then at around half an hour later, uh, he says, I start getting contractions and I, you know, I figured, oh, okay. So we probably, cause he was 27 hours. So I figured, oh, this is going to be a long night. And, uh, and like in the next half hour, I had like three contractions. So I called the doctor and he says, listen, you don't have to come in yet, but if you feel like it, come into the hospital, which was five minutes away from our house, anybody from the Philadelphia area, we lived in Penn Wynn and this was Lankin a hospital. It was, you could walk there. And on the way to the hospital, I said to your dad, you know what, take me now. Cause I don't like the notion of having a contraction in the car, you know, and this is probably going to take, you know, a half hour so we can get to the hospital first. Well, I had three contractions on the way to the hospital and I get You're to welcome. the hospital and there was construction going on. And your dad said, you know what, I'll drop you off and I'll go park the car because everybody, you know, we're all assuming this is going to be a long night. And he, they wheel me up without him to the uh, labor room and the nurse, you know, examines me and then the doctor comes in and he examines me and he goes oh you're five centimeters dilated but yeah it's going to be a long night I'm going to go get some dinner I'll be back later in the meantime your dad hasn't shown up yet and I'm like going through the roof I'm in so much pain I'm screaming and where is he is he not coming and I don't think another half hour went by and I was just having all these contractions where did you leave me during um, with Aunt Margaret, Aunt Margaret. Care of oh, were you friend. alone? It was only in eleven o'clock at night, or was there like a nurse keeping you company? No, no, no. You always have an OB nurse with you, and a resident is probably there, I guess. And the doctor would go in and out. But in those days, there was no like shaman and someone burning doulas. Well, there was at the at, there was another hospital where you went to do that. It was oh, okay. where the midwives was... were. <laughs> anyway, this was a you know a traditional hospital. And they did have a birthing room, but only one. In those days, it wasn't common to have birthing rooms. So you had to go from the labor room to the delivery room. Anyway, so the doctor leaves and now I'm with the nurse and I'm like screaming, where's your, you know, where's Roger? And he comes toddling in, you know, like half hour later with a cup of coffee. He stopped to get coffee, right? And I'm screaming and I'm like, I grabbed him by the t-shirt and I threw him against the wall. (laughs) I'm going, what did you do to me? I want, give me painkillers. I want painkillers. And the nurse says to me, 
sorry, honey, you're in transition. I was only there a half hour. And I'm going, what do you mean I'm in transition? I kept banging him into the wall. I stretched his shirt out completely. Lily was born in two hours and 20 minutes. From but then what was she like? She was born by, I was in the hospital 1130 at 122 a.m. She was born. Three pushes and she popped out. And what was she You're like welcome, you're welcome, you're welcome. She was always on the go. I mean, I was, I immediately nursed her and she's like trying to, oh, while she was being born, she was kicking me. And I said to the doctor, she's kicking me. And he goes, that's impossible. Babies don't kick during birth. And I go, I'm telling I you, this baby's kicking me. <laughs> Place she, it to be. She, <laughs> popped, go. she was like six pounds. She popped out three pushes. I mean, remember, I two and a half hours of pushing with you. The doctor was in shock. He comes running in at the last minute. He almost didn't make it. I, yeah, I, he almost didn't make it for the birth. And uh, no one would hold her because she would be crawling up your chest, trying to look over the shoulder when she was a newborn. And she never stopped since then. She was constantly on the go. I mean, you don't move around as much now. No, no. I used up all my energy. When Lily well, Now I have kids. I'm so down. tired. <laughs> she slowed down at puberty. Then she became a couch potato. <laughs> no. That's not, really okay, not, I think you have to edit that out. That's not Why do I have fair. to edit that out? That is not, that's not true. Oh, that is not true. I played no, sports my true. whole life. If, if any yeah. one of the three of us could, very have athletic. Con, could have been considered an athlete, it would have No, been no, no. Lily, Lily was, very, was an athlete, but... She was on she's the go, always, she's like always on bouncing the off the walls on the go up until about eight. I do, I, I have, I do like to move it and shake it, you know. Yes. I would anyway, say so that was a very quick labor. couch potato. I like, do not think is an accurate description. Anyway, it was textbook no, like you see in the movies when opposite. a baby's born really fast. Thank God I made it to the hospital when I did, or she would have been born at home. Now, fast forward another two years, and I got this one, who I never went into labor with you. I was six days past my due date with Becky. The same as with you, Shy. Which is wild for your Lily was kid. six days before my due date. Becky was- My second kid was seven days past his due date. Right. So, so anyway, um, with Becky, it was totally different. And it was very, very traumatic because I, I heard the pop again in the middle of the night. Um, or was it in the morning? Maybe at 5.30 in the morning. And I thought, oh, my water broke. And I went to the bathroom and it wasn't water. It was just a lot of blood. So I called the doctor again. And the, the doctor says, um, no, that's not, you really need to come to the hospital right away because I don't know what's going on. So I went to the hospital and then it ended up being an emergency C-section. And I remember Lily and I were left with Debbie Saldana, the babysitter, who also was the producer of the Bozo show. The yes. clown show in Philadelphia. Yeah. Fun yeah. fact, huh? Yeah. Lots of fun facts in this episode. The interesting thing sure, is that I think she remembers. No, this. but she watched you after that. The, the morning that Lily, that Becky was born, um, Janet, your uncle Mario and Aunt Jan were oh, she on, us to the, on she deck us to come hospital. over. Right. When and they, I got a care bear when Becky was born. And oh <laughs> which care Jan bear did had you told it was, it was a pink, pink. one. Pink. Um, it was like a, a rainbow on his tummy. Lily, oh, Jan had told Lily that when the baby was born, she was going to buy her a Care Bear. And the story goes that when Jan and Mario, when Lily and you woke up that morning to go like to nursery school and, and school, the first words out of Lily's mouth were Care Bear coming. I knew, <laughs> I, knew I knew the good stuff was coming. <laughs> and up until that point, Shy and I had our own rooms, but in that moment, Shy and I became roommates. We That's moved true. in. And I moved Lily into would go your on room. To throw up all over my GI yeah, Joes. Totally. <laughs> and it wasn't until many years after we moved to Canada, even after washing them, that those toys stopped smelling like bark. You could still see the chunks of it in my GI Joe Havoc, which was like the coolest <laughs> present I'd ever gotten. It was a vehicle. Vehicles were not easy to come by. Wasn't we didn't have Brian Gilbert toys money. <laughs> and mine had like crusts of Lily's barf. And I remember her like throwing up and like walk, like crawling over to my toy bin. Like there, she could have gone anywhere. The floor. <laughs> anyway. I, I, you know, but, I will say but also now that maybe I it was like, the nausea of having to go up and down as a two-year-old to the top bunk. She, she, slept, <laughs> she moved in at age two into your I slept room on the top and bunk. slept in the top bunk. Yeah, I was afraid. Because you, you refused to go up to the top bunk was, and you were five. I was afraid of a lot of things. 
<laughs> um, you didn't want to come what's, out. What's I told interesting you. To me personality. Is that now that Becky lives next door to me, I'm I'm really learning a lot about her. You really like you really have a much bigger idea of who your sibling is that's <laughs> five years younger than you. I'm Shy like, texts me every once in a while and he's like, Did you know that Becky so and so? And I'm like, Of course I knew that. <laughs> She's my sister. We're two years yeah, apart. Yeah. We shared a room till we were I was 14. I was like, Shall I go on? And he's like, Wow. Just getting a whole new perspective. Not to know, but now peel, it's just peeling like, the layers back. Just peeling the layers back, back on the on the there's, Becky mystery. That there's a lot of there's just a lot to uh, there's a lot to Becky. You know, it's very it's a lot of fun. I'm getting. I feel like I'm reclaiming those. It's like Becky and I get to be roommates, but with your own house. houses, which is the, the ideal situation. More people <laughs> around us all the time. <laughs> Um, so all of us to say, mom, thank you for giving birth to us. Everyone oh, I thank heard. you thank for, you for making me a mother. Thank you for sharing the stories. Um, I think what, what do you say, um, what do you say of, of all of this birth stories? What's like a personality trait? You said for me that I'm not in a rush, but what is your, and Lily was on the move. What about Becky? What's Becky's personality trait from her? She makes an birth? interest. There's a certain urgency about Becky when she decides to do something oh that's good you know it's like impatient you know you just not only do you want to get to what it is that you want but there's an urgency to something you believe in and want and as I said you know my the birth of Becky was an emergency it was like there was an episode in Grey's Anatomy where my birth was on that show and with Becky it was seriously very bad and scary and um and there's always this urgency about Becky and it kind of that brings to mind you know it's like uh that makes a lot of sense all right now let's talk about because this is a show where we talk about movies and television and i will say uh there are a lot of birthing scenes in tv shows and movies and i will say look who's talking for example i learned a lot about reproduction like the whole cycle of reproduction from look who's talking from that like opening scene (laughs) all the way through when the mother's mouth goes into like very a educational monster voice and she's like get get away or whatever she, <laughs> says. she does like the zool voice um that to me always was one of the and now for my kids it's how they learned about reproduction because we watched that with them recently what are some of the birthing stories that stand out to you all in movies and tv and, and tv Oh, um, my this favorite. Your no, idea no, for no, the no. I, I wasn't sure who was going to go first. I would say, on the, actually, sh- on the pod- like, should I say it on the favorite, podcast? My favorite moments <laughs> in any movie of any birthing story is in What to Expect When You're Expecting. That is great. Well, who yeah. plays who plays the character? It's Brooklyn one, Decker. Brooklyn from Decker. Frankie and she and literally Grace. just has her babies by sneezing them out. And she's tw- having twins. <laughs> and then she has her babies because I have to tell you, like, as a woman, when you hear somebody's birth story where it went like quote unquote well, and no birth is actually easy, obviously, but the these unicorn births where they have their babies, yeah, in two hours, they're just like standing up they're and they're like, like oh, oh my god, he just came out, and then like the next day they're walking around and they're fine and they're like no, that's going out not for my coffee case. <laughs> or they're like, like they IKEA. Energy. That's what it feels like. It feels like women just sneeze out their babies, and you're like, I don't need to. Do I agree with <laughs> Becky. That's a great example because not that like I don't. The movie is not pretending that that's what happens the movie is saying that that's what it feels like to other women (laughs) when you hear that and i think that that's crucial um i mean if you compare the way shy was born and the way you were born lily it you could say metaphorically that i right exactly but trust me when i tell you that right i was of course your father against the wall of course not incredible excruciating two hours of transition and then a baby pops out is there one that's relief. is there one that's accurate to you, Becky? Of any movie? I, well, I, I had know. two emergency. I had an emergency C section and like an urgent C section. So I've ne- I can't think of a movie. And please, listeners, tweet at me. Let me know what I should be watching. I cannot think of a single movie where a C section is just like portrayed as like something that had to happen and that like is okay yeah and it's okay and it's and yeah like yeah you know so i let me know because my my first session was pretty scary 
But the second one was more, like, we knew it was coming. We knew I was going to have to have one. We just didn't and know we when. We podcasted on We podcasted day. the morning. Actually, you want to go? <laughs> you were in a, you seemed like you were in a good place. Day, you were. Uh, episode. That was the morning. I had my baby right after, like, a few hours later. I finished that and we went to the hospital. And, like, the second one, we knew I was going to have a C-section. We didn't know when. So it was, like, just a mystery date. And then they said, okay, today you need to have it. So, again, it was, like, urgent. But it wasn't, there wasn't some, like, high drama where, our lives were at risk it was just like this is the safest thing that needs to happen and I feel like that I've never seen portrayed and so there's this whole you know very real storyline for women where it's like the safest thing is to have a c-section and that's okay and it doesn't just have to be because it's in the moment of life or death and anyways so it's like a little bit like uh so you don't on, feel guys. like you've had your story told. I yet. don't. I don't feel well, like I've had so, my can, story told. Can I? Can I, talking about pop culture? Can I say that there's a very famous birthing scene from a movie that really bothers me? Which that one? like that that is supposedly like the most realistic, and that's knocked up. Like if you look, if you Google that, or like people talk about like, oh, John Apatow did so well. He that's a really realistic, realistic birthing than scene. Man directing a scene about right, a given and <laughs> and and like, and he was like, and I chose to put. <laughs> and he's like, uh, you know, I, I chose to put a, a, a pic, the the shot of the baby crowning because you see twice in the scene of like the vagina and like the baby's head cr- coming out, like just the edge when it's just coming out. Um, and like, you know, kudos to me because I really, I, he, he said, and I quote, I didn't want it to look like an episode of Friends. I really wanted it to look like a birth. And I understand that he's making a comedy. However, when you go back and look at it, Becky, I really want you to go back and look at that and mom. And Shai, you should too. But it, when you look at that scene, it's t- I find it infuriating. First of all, when the baby head, the shot of the baby's head crowning, um, Jay Baruchel, the character—I don't remember the names of the people in that movie. Jay I just know the actor in the birth. He so he's in the waiting room with a group of friends, and he, they, she's screaming so loud that he goes to check on her for some reason they're like you know which makes no sense her sister's in the waiting room he goes to check on her and they show the shot of the vagina and he comes out as if he's like eyes have been burned and he's like like the horror like he can't like he'll never be able to unsee it and i'm like if you're gonna show the crowning shot like everybody should have been like that's amazing this is beautiful not like a horror movie do you know what i mean like that i just found that like so see it lily but that's a problem. I think, the, I, mean, I, think, I, think, I think that's, that's the problem. How, that's the narrative that it's supposed right. to be this like thing and, that will, and, yeah. Right. And what I point is that like, if this is what we're looking at is the most realistic birthing scene, besides the fact that like all the, he should never have come in that room in the first way. It's so rude. And like the way that the, everybody talks to her is yeah, horrible. You, you didn't have any extra people in your births right like no no, no extra allowed. people in they my- I had a this is I had a <laughs> no they, they snuck mom in, in. Lily had Ari they, they had like this is pre-pandemic in Spain you can't have extra people like the Kardashians had like their neighbor like had everybody in the room like right <laughs> and and <laughs> and what what did Becky say? I was like, say Cormans always have a way we always know no, a guy Jose, we know a guy knew somebody who knew and somebody and Jose I, I in. did and in but in Spain pre-pandemic you can only have one well, person like, in the room I with mean, you we talk about funny fun like we can keep this light and fun and talk about fun scenes the point is that I have yet to see a movie and I'm sure it is out there where like a, a woman while delivering actually is in control of what's happening like okay. just even right. the physical but, position of being but but back. also okay, my, so my point like is that it, it my wait hold on let me just finish my point is not that a woman shouldn't be able to yell oh also when she does yell the doctor in the room is like like stop yelling or like shush or something he like shushes her i'm like what the fuck is this scene how is this the oh, most realistic John's birth we have right? Yeah, exactly. He's like, oh, gee, like, calm down or something ridiculous. It's supposed to be a comedy. And exactly. It is supposed to be a comedy. But it, it let's not tout this as the most realistic example of birthing so in a film. That, that one is seen as realistic. Yes, that's what bothers me. That it's funny and stupid and silly, I don't care. But the fact that, like, if you, it's talked about, and don't, I've heard many people talk about it. That it's not. Let it just be, like, the funny, yeah. funny, stupid, don't ridiculous. Don't, don't pretend that, that this is what it's supposed to be, because so it's actually a really bad message. It's not, a, yeah. it's not... So how to the other be. extreme, the other extreme of a birth that to me was not realistic but necessary for the plot of the movie, 
Is that is the name of the movie The Quiet Place? The one where the yes, oh, that's a great that's example. A great one that's a great example. One. Okay, that's now come on, what woman is well, going to be totally silent? She, well, she wasn't. In the end, she screams because it's not realistic, and right? Her husband and gets eaten. No, no, and her husband light the fire before that. They light the fireworks. Light the fireworks, and when the fire timed explode is when she can she screams. Uh, the baby okay, out. but yeah. then he gets but the, eaten at the end of the movie. He does get yeah, eaten, yeah, does. but that is a bit insane. Um, but that it's it's a great gonna, one. Mom. What do you think they're going to do to top it in Quiet Place Two? I don't know. I can't imagine because if she gave birth in the first movie, they're going to have to do like a junior eaten. situation to top it. <laughs> they're going to have to have like they're going to run know. out of fireworks. Um, <laughs> I don't know what but, they could do. But Shai, but did you want it, you wanted me to tell my story yes. or not, Shai? No, your whole no. pregnancy story? No. no, no. You said when I told you yesterday a quick thing that happened during my labor. You were like, you oh, got to yeah, tell sure, that. Yeah. Tell us, tell us your. Th- I don't know what I remember what it was. Though, but go for you it. don't. Okay, so no, this is something it. that that should be in a, a this topic about birth. If you want to talk about a real birth story and a real birth scene, this should be included. So I with first of all, for the record, my birth with my first baby is the almost to the letter, the exact same birth as mom had with you. 27 hours, three and a half hours of pushing forceps. It was weird that it's like the exact same thing. Um, anyways, and so my well, second and Becky's first and Becky's first baby was born in a similar situation to mine, except that she was in labor for I don't know 18 hours before going into an emergency 20, C-section. I just hours. did it from the beginning, but it was very freaky for me as a mother to be with you and you're watching re- right. watching you relive my story. Yes, and that was weird. I was, you know how I was with Becky. Yes, you, know, you turned watching white. her, she and I was just room. like, no, I didn't. Yeah. Get taken you were out of you the were room, pretty upset I was though. Annoyed at the doctor. There was a <laughs> moment where where you lost all the color from your face. Well, this is true. Too. <laughs> okay, so I did. So I, did. I had the I literally so lost all the color from my face. having a baby in a pandemic is crazy, um, but I had the wonderful fortune of having my dear friend deliver my baby in a pandemic um who happened she's a labor and delivery nurse wonderful person and happened to be uh available that day like she wasn't working so she went to work to have my baby with me and um it was it was an incredible experience and um the second baby like we say it comes much sooner than the first but it was still 14 hours it's still a really long time <laughs> for me like, oh, you're like down to half half for me that's half exactly but there's none of this two hour bullshit it was it still took a while and um it was incredible and it was wonderful and she was so sweet and she was right there with me and Jose and at the beginning of the pushing part she recommended that I I I push on my side so I turned over um like in like fetal position and uh started pushing that way and you know you're really concentrating on pushing, so you're not you're not really thinking of anything else. But I knew she was right there with me, encouraging me, and like um, taking care of me. So then you know, have my baby, whatever. Like two days later, I turned to Jose and I'm like, "Gosh, you know, this is." I was just so overwhelmed with this emotion of this incredible experience, and I go, "Why?" Um, I was so amazing that she was there. It's so nice that she kept like wiping my butt during the part where I was like pushing like that was just so nice of her like just like any little thing she was there and Jose was like yeah that is really nice and I was like but wait but like why it was like a few times like why was she wiping my butt and he's like oh it's honey it's okay doesn't doesn't matter and I was like oh no 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 what do you mean why was she wiping my butt and he's like well because you pooped <laughs> and I was like what do you, I pooped and she wiped my butt and he was like, yeah, but just a little bit, a few times, not a big deal. A few times, just <laughs> like, a few times. I, just, just a little bit. And, and I was like, oh. forever now. And I was like, oh my God, oh my God. I literally take my phone and I text her and I was just like, you are amazing. I just found out that you well, wiped my butt. You brought it up. You didn't oh know. yeah, of course, I immediately. I think, to, I think she Immediately. I was like, and, and I was like, thinking. why didn't you tell me in the moment? Because like, if I was there and it was Becky or you shy, I would have been like, you're pooing. <laughs> <laughs> BT dubs and and she was just like it's so always like how did you not tell me why didn't you tell me and she was like because I'm a professional and yeah. you know how many times that ha- it's so normal she's like every time a woman All has a baby friends poop on her. 
Exactly. She's like, this is so normal. And it's like, it's part of it. And like, don't worry that was finished by the time you're like, by the time the baby came out, like an hour later, that didn't happen. So don't worry. It's totally normal. And I was like, okay, okay. And then like a few months later, she, she was supposed to come over, um, to meet the baby and she couldn't she something came up and she texted me she's like oh sorry i'm not gonna have to make it today and i just i was like you wet me but my butt we're good like we're best friends forever do not worry we could get to get like you never have to apologize that's, You're, that's we're golden fair. i mean that's, that's a, a rule story. if someone wipes your butt your you butt. never have to apologize the to thing you is that for again, all the stories exactly they tell you before you have a baby you never know that that can happen that's also something i was like if you're gonna show me a realistic scene in a movie she should poo before she has a baby because (laughs) that happens that's just part of it like real talk guys hey look thank you for bringing we try we try not to do things that are serious or important but lily is bringing the real like think about all the amazing diarrhea scenes in movies guys like and all the incredible poop scenes None of them have to do with birth. I think we, we're I getting, mean, there's a market it here. It have to do with men though. Like men are willing to sort of take a laugh at certain things and have certain things be gross, but they're like, nope, that's a line. Can't imagine my mom doing that. Not putting that <laughs> right. in the movie. Or my wife. That's a good point. That's a very good point. That is, that is probably like, Judd was like, nope. Mm, sorry. Bridge too far. Too far. <laughs> a bridge too far is right. Yeah. Um, all right. So I feel like, well, Amy Heckerling did, did direct Look Who's Talking, but that was in the 80s. So I'm not sure she would have gotten the, the, the go ahead the go the ahead go to ahead. do as much as 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 she would have but i've always that that all it seemed always that, Mom, that's also way, on her phone right before this rewatch the birth at the end of lethal up and four it was <laughs> just so like, funny just, she's like really research, funny. but then she just watched it all the way through like giggling to herself it, it was, was so funny but, but but back to look who's talking when he drives her in the cab that's so that's a great pop culture moment yeah. too there is there are few things that are as terrible at having contractions in a car i was just thinking that when, there, there aren't too many I, things that there aren't too many that is in a car that is very when true i did get to the hospital with with my first and they said well you know you you're you can go home and come back later it's your choice and then i was like yeah i'm, I'm gonna go home be better and i remember mom you looked at me you said do you want to have contractions in the car again and i said nope i'll stay Thank live here now <laughs> right. uh, when i got I to the... tell you it is the only wor- thing worse than that is maybe having a herniated disc and having to sit in a car yeah. i can't what, think of what, anything else when i went to the got to the er when i had ash or just now like a, a few months ago when i got there this dude like young like like ner- cute nurse like comes up to me as I, like i'm walking into the ER, and he he looks at me and he's like so tell me what's going on <laughs> And I, du- I literally like doubled over like, oh, with a huge belly. And I was like, what the fuck do you think is going on? <laughs> I was like, I'm having a fucking baby. <laughs> Did you say like, it in that? Spanish or English? Okay. In Spanish. Okay. Just so you should know that in, in when I rewatched the lethal weapon thing, that's how she comes into the hospital. Like, and they, you know, and they're trying to like calm her down and she just gets even more angry and starts cursing at everybody. So that's very realistic. Okay, let's let's look at some iconic birthing scenes, but that are like out of the normal. So by by renter man, I'm gonna go with the Prometheus. The Prometheus, <laughs> oh, the Prometheus C section. Right. So yeah, that's the true. one way they so took is it. Junior. Yeah, similar to mine. I just went into like a little pod, boopy beep bop and microwave button, and then had a, a robot C section. Really? No, uh, shy. I went to the hospital. She there were lots one. of people around. Home. One of the biggest well, anyways. Okay, so yeah. Prometheus. So Prometheus self <laughs> self C section. Self C section. With like no Prometheus. Anesthesia, no, right? anesthesia. no, no, no. Didn't that happen on Grey's too, Beck? Wasn't that a thing on Grace? Well, a- April delivers her own. She like the, she has a ba- she has a C section with no anesthesia. Where's oh, that? that's it. When, it's uh, ben, anime. ben delivers her baby right on a kitchen table with no. It's well, insane. There's what movie in Grey's Anatomy? Oh. Just, they have all the births in Grey's Anatomy, and they that also have. Count. Oh, it was actually ER where I saw the one that was like Becky's, not so, Grey's. Oh. Oh, so per, so Prometheus. Okay. Then there's Twilight. I don't really know what happens because I haven't seen that movie. What happens with the Twilight baby? Well, she I, gets uh, to like a full grown person or something. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sums it up. Okay. So like that like obviously if you have sex 
you're punished. If you punished. have to become a vampire, and if, if you have sex, you have to baby, die. You're punished. Does the baby get born, or does it like chew its way out? Like what no, happens? no, no. I think the baby's born. I thought it? there's a whole thing where she has to like sip blood while she's giving birth. Well, she because the baby it's is a really vampire, so she's got to protect herself, and she has to become a vampire in order not to die. I'm so glad mom has seen this, so she can explain it. <laughs> I think that's what I remember. I mean, oh, she, she sounds yeah. reasonable. So Twilight, and then let's go for you know a. I may be making it. And up. let's go for Junior. <laughs> junior. It's also a C-section. Also a C-section. <laughs> Becky, you said you weren't represented. <laughs> so Becky's two representations. Junior, what's an, an alien birth and a male. And a male. Oh, a, man <laughs> a baby, right. He, it's a man having You're a baby. right. I stand <laughs> Just what Becky. Representation like is important. Right. They, they, they were like, C-sections are okay when you have been forcibly impregnated with a an alien alien or you're a man, you're a or, man. You're, or you're a man <laughs> and you're a men man. can have c-sections with no judgment uh right um, exactly so so <laughs> what is your buy rent right man equipment. on those three situations lily Okay, I can go first. Go first. Okay, so yeah. I'm going to buy the junior one because that yeah. really is the one that's most like my situation. I was going to say, I was like, you have to buy it. junior. Exactly. Fine, let's do this. Okay. So you're feeling really supported but scared. Um, so junior is the one I'm buying. It's actually, to, it is on the list of most realistic births yeah, as well. Okay. Because um, cause they said that even if he's a man, it's a pretty realistic C-section. <laughs> So, wait, what was the, what was the second one? I it was first? Prometheus and there's Prometheus Twilight. or Twilight. Oh, I'm wrenching Prometheus because that's at least like so badass of her to be like. There's lots of scenes of women, of course, or like this idea that, like a woman could like you know squat down and birth her own baby and catch her own baby, right? And you know what, C-section, C-section moms, like we want to have that story too, where we can birth our own baby through C-section. So then she gets my rent. And I'm definitely man manning vampire Twilight baby. Like, oh, yeah, no, that's wait a minute. Ridiculous. Wait a minute. I'm gonna I'm gonna go with. But babies are kind of like vampires. So I'm gonna... I don't know. Maybe I guess <laughs> like, 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 like a like a drinking man, your blood like a now man for nine months. They, literally, you're drinking your blood and then just continue. They do suck the life out of you. So I don't know I'm gonna accurate. I'm gonna buy. I'm going to go opposite of you. I'm going to buy Twilight because <laughs> the screaming and the carrying on that went on is very realistic. You're, you're in, you feel like you're giving birth to a full grown person <laughs> when that baby's coming through. Okay. That, that really, that, that scene kind of, whether it's realistic or not is irrelevant. It's how you feel. Um, the other two, eh, I don't know. I guess you're right about the C-section. You know, the fact that even though it's a man and it's scheduled, it's it's okay that. So maybe that's a rent. The Mez, the the alien one. Oh, that's fascinating. Just not, not interested in that. No. All right, Lil. How about you? Well, same as back. Same as back. Okay. Well, for me, I am going to buy Prometheus, and the reason why is I think that is we one of love the, most... the Alien franchise. We know. I love the Alien franchise, but I thought that was one of the most suspenseful and compelling scenes, and the fact that like she in this moment figures out, like she 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 solves that problem herself. Like she's the first person I've ever seen in all the Alien movies that is about to have something burst out of her, and she thwarts it. So. That's totally a really good point. I think one of the biggest crimes of the alien franchise, mom's just like watching, mom's just like watching movies on her phone now, like, <laughs> while I'm talking. Such a teenager. <laughs> mom's, mom's, Take her phone teenager. away. I thought I had turned down the volume. Me. Sorry. And and, and and it's such a crime in the alien franchise that the, the best they could come up with with the next movie was not showing her character on the screen and then having her be dead off screen. It's the worst. So Prometheus, then I'm going to uh, rent Junior only because nothing is worse than the Twilight movies, even yes, though, as I will say over and over and over again, as I've come to say, huge Kristen Stewart fan, huge... Uh, that movie doesn't do her... I mean, I've... Ja the, no, the movie I'm Pattinson's not suggesting really... you buy t the Twilight series. I thought we were just comparing no, 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 the I'm three birth scenes. My, I'm just making my oh, case. Okay. Okay. I'm making my case. I'm okay. just saying, like, I just, those movies are atrocious. And so, all right, <laughs> let's now, let's transition from uh, Blood and Guts and Babies to what we have been watching. I have like a very- Your list is insane, Shai. And I know you've had like one of the busiest work weeks ever. How is this list possible? You know, sometimes you need your, you know, some people, like sometimes you got to have your thing that gets you through the week. That's well, all. No I kidding. I only saw one thing all 
I'll go first. Okay. <laughs> One new thing I've watched. I've been slowly, you know, uh, chipping away at other series. Uh, I started. We watched a little more WandaVision. I've been watching Resident Alien. But this week, I finally saw Promising Young Woman, and it got to do an app on it, right? We got to do an app. Me away. It's utterly okay. brilliant. We've been talking about it nonstop. It, it, yeah, I mean, we could do ten episodes just talking about how well crafted and smart and suspenseful and heartbreaking and empowering and all the all the things that 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 movie is and how genius the performances were and uh oof, man that is a right. well-written well-made movie so that's what i saw this week awesome lil mm, nothing new I'm watching and enjoying though Oh, you just want me to say it every week? Crazy ex-girlfriend. Um, I may be finally on board. I've made it to season two. And most of the other stuff you've ever told me to watch, I like lose interest halfway through the first season. So besides obviously Patriot and um, Perpetual Grace, which I constantly will recommend to I'm the end of time. Dinner. I'm on a roll. I'm Friday night dinner. You're on a good roll. But I'm saying is that like something where like I'm watching it continuously is hard to get me into. And um you that yeah i think i'm i think i'm pretty into it so then we also like missed vikings i gotta take this up with josh crew because i think he watches this show and it's i we're really missing last josh kingdom and like anything viking based right and like some kind of viking thing and i was like oh everybody's talking about vikings let's give it a try oh my god i think it makes me miss last kingdom even more yeah i saw um, half an episode and stopped watching it's it. not nearly as good but you know it, it's entertaining i guess if you want to like watch something where somebody's named ragnar whatever <laughs> Um, also really like Ragnar it. Ragnarsson. <laughs> yeah, he's pretty into it. Um, but other than that, busy week here. Not uh, not too much more. I didn't have much anything else. Okay, so there's a few great things that I've been watching on television. Uh, foreign. There's more than these two. I've been watching a lot of TV. It's amazing how much you can watch when you're not taking care of a family. When I'm <laughs> back in Philadelphia. That was shade. Shit gonna... over you, <laughs> yeah, but I'm so jealous. Like, I'm like, oh my gosh, you just okay. get to so, sit and watch um, movies. I discovered, uh, as I have to say, what is it? I show you. I, to I told you. I told you, show. Told you show? show. Um, I think that it was Karen who recommended that I watch um, a place to call home, which is a fabulous Australian TV show. It's six seasons, which is great because a lot of the foreign shows are only like three, three seasons, seasons. Yeah. so it's very exciting because it's an amazing show and i know that i'm only i'm not done with the first season i know i still have five more seasons to go and i'm very excited about it it takes place in australia and i'm not quite sure why the main characters all have a british accent since some of them are actually australian actors i'm trying to figure that out but it's basically a drama about a family and the main character is a woman who has survived the Holocaust, but she's very mysterious. And what's wonderful about it is that every episode they peel back another little piece of her story. And by the end of the first season, you really get to know her better, but the people around her see her as this very mysterious person. And it's just an incredible story about uh, class structure, even in Australia, where you would think it's more American, where there isn't really a big uh, thing, but there are people holding, it's the mid fifties. And some people are holding on to their, um, they think they're hoity-toity, you know, but they're not. Uh, and that's just an excellent, a lot about anti-Semitism, bigotry, homophobia. I mean, it has every modern theme that we struggle with and uh, set in, in a really interesting place. It's just a wonderful, fabulous actors, amazing writing. I totally recommend it. A Place to Call Home. Another Australian show is called Offspring. I've mentioned it to you. It's this wacky almost dark comedy it's not very dark but uh called offspring and it's about three siblings and the drama that they cause in the world around them it, the three of them are mm. constantly causing all kinds of drama around them and to each other so it's really a lot of fun maybe no not like the three of you these are really dysfunctional people in this show and it's very funny so i recommend that and then i can't do the show without mentioning mother's day gift i got on Friday night. This is my true. Kids, they took me to a Friday night movie. We rented out it a theater. It is the first we time were social distanced. We first were time in what eighteen months that any of us had been inside a movie theater, 
And they surprised me. And we showed up at the AMC and they rented out the movie theater. And we saw it's so fun, something dude. you must see on a big screen, Kong versus Godzilla. And all of us, I all mean, six of us were so excited. The great thing about this movie is that the title says it all. Like you That's what the movie know is. what you're in for. It's right. just Kong versus fact, Godzilla. If they had had more backstory or people in it, I would have been annoyed. Yeah, it was really right. on It was the almost like there. too much of the humans. So I'm glad they really stuck with like the, the stakes were you're worried about King Kong the whole time. And that's what that's <laughs> yeah. that's all I needed is. And then so. you started to worry about Godzilla. Yeah, that's so uh, And anyway, so it was absolutely only worthwhile seeing in a very large screen. So if you have no way of seeing it on a large screen, it's okay if you miss it. But it was a lot of fun. Uh, another it was a great lot thing of fun. was that mom didn't ask what the movie was through <laughs> the opening credits. So mom, we I turned to mom right. and I said, "Oh, so you, you know what movie it is?" And she's like, "No, I'm just so excited." So that movie starts there's like creatures and things fighting and, and, she, and she has <laughs> it's no just idea. a lot of fun. And Would you, you like know what's what great? What I got I, you as a, uh, as a child those no. those are very old movies, the original ones. They're black and white and I think they predate me and as a child I used to they'd come on television and I'd be afraid. I was terrified of the original Godzilla movie. And this one, I was laughing through that throughout the entire thing. And it was, Allie was covering her eyes sometimes. Yeah, it was, she got into they had it. some pretty scary moments in it, but I just was having so much fun that the whole thing was very delightful. And um, it was a great Mother's Day gift. So, I, yeah. it was That was a lot of fun. That was a lot of fun. And for me, I've been, people ask me sometimes, do you watch things when you sleep? Yes, I do. But also my kids watch TV now. So I, I, sco- I, get, I get to squeeze a lot in there. Uh, so the big family show has been wiped out on TBS with Nicole Byer and John Cena. Oh, oh, yeah. Hilarious. Dude, what is that about? It's like an obstacle course show where people just get oh, like yes, smashed, but it's very it. funny. Like it's got a, it's got an edge to the humor. There's a lot of like innuendo and sort of like off color jokes that are implied. And so, and the, and the guests are very funny. So it's not just like strong meatheads competing that each, each team of guests has a lot of personality. So that's been a lot of fun. Then uh, I needed something to help cleanse the palate after Crazy Ex-Girlfriend, which was very emotional at the end of that. So dropped into I'm Sorry, which has a- Andrea Savage and Tom Everett Scott. And I believe, well, I'm forward to watching the show that. goes to Alana Austin, because when I asked her if she was watching the show, she's like, I told you to watch this show a long time ago. Oh, that's, but, a, that's a serious I told you show when yeah, you recommend that show to somebody who recommended it to you. Yeah, yeah, that's a... That, <laughs> Yes. Yeah, so, that's the worst. But at least I knew it would be her kind of show. Anyways, that that's very cute. Very, very funny <laughs> and not a lot of investment. Um, I saw an amazing, like five stars. I gave it the full buy on Letterbox. Rumble, um, the mm-hmm. Indians who rock the world, which is all about the Native American influence on American rock music. And Ooh, it that's traces awesome. different musicians who have native american roots and their relationship to that and how it affected their music and it goes all the way back to charlie Patton and link ray all the way through um taboo from the black eyed peas and robbie robertson from uh, the band and so i and and a few other characters you know i don't want to sort of give it all away but a few other folks i hadn't heard of and i had so much fun this it was amazing. This was just one of the coolest music documentaries I've seen in a long time. And I what was the name of it again? Rumble. Rumble. The Indians who rock the world. Um, and uh, but Rumble. It's on. I'm Amazon Prime right now. Highly, highly recommend it. Uh, caught a half hour or two of Aquafina as Nora from Queen. How was that? Watch I've always that wanted to see it. It was funny. It was, it was, funny. Funny. It was funny. funny. Aquafina is like hilarious, and we were laughing a lot. B- and- BD yeah. Wong is in it, and he's great. And then. It's so, wacky. Somewhere between like naps and a million other things, I I watched Machete Kills, which is you know I don't know how you, I'm Rodrigo, impressed with you, dude. Which is like pretty hilarious and funny, and I watched it on my own. It was like a Spy Kids movie, but with like the heads getting chopped off. <laughs> and uh, I finally got around to watching Christopher. This I watched earlier today. Christopher Nolan's Insomnia with with uh, Al Pacino and. Um, uh hillary swank and i saw that a long time ago so that was okay i just i eventually i I haven't seen all of christopher nolan's movies and i wanted to get through that one i will say for a movie about insomnia i fell asleep many times while watching it (laughs) many many times 
That's because, I mean. You fall asleep all it's the a time. Sl- oh, I mean, yeah, I, I fall mean, you're, asleep. You're, I wouldn't, I mean, we're, I'm not going to make light of narcolepsy, but narcolepsy, <laughs> but I do let's fa- just say it's your, you, there's something going on. If your <laughs> attention is not being captured, you will not off. That, that's fair. All right, mom, happy Mother's Day. Well, thank you. We love you. Oh, I know you do. Where, I love you back. Where can people follow you? At um, Inner Wonder on Twitter and uh, Instagram. That's it. No, not on yeah, Instagram. Your Instagram like is private. Requests from people on Instagram. No, no your Instagram no, is actually. private. I never so... actually accept anybody's requests. So then they can't follow you on Instagram, Mom. Well, no, but what if it's people who listen to the what show? No, but if they, your... but if they, if they, if I know them or if I like the yeah. comment they're making, I'll let. Oh, yeah, all of them. So you've got to earn mom's followers. Yeah, Absolutely. We, have to be, we haven't discussed this yet on the pod, but we have to be weary of, of trolls. Trolls? Of, trolls. of our well, podcast? I'm just saying we haven't not had incidents. Right? <laughs> we haven't not had. To, to be discussed in the future. Okay. Well, Lily, how about you? Um, you can follow me at Chi Chi, C H I C H I K Gomez on the Twitter and um, on Lily Corman on Clubhouse. And Becky at Paper BK Princess on Twitter, and uh, you know sometimes on Clubhouse. I'm not not on it, so there we go. <laughs> yeah, I'm on Clubhouse too, but I've never actually. You've gone been to in our I've rooms. been to I've been to a few rooms. And you can follow me at Pancake and the Number Four Table, Pancake Four Table on Twitter and Instagram. You can follow all of the Friday Night Movie shenanigans at Friday Night Movie on Twitter and Instagram or FridayNightMoviePod.com. Please join our family and checking out and supporting the NAACP Legal Defense Fund, Equal Justice Initiative, and the Asian American Journalists Association. And with that, our Mother's Day episode comes to a close. The theme music kicks in and we dance our way into this brunch filled day. Bye, guys. Love you. Happy Mother's Day. Bye. Love you. Did you tell Shy and Becky what I got you for Mother's Day? Oh, you told me. Yeah, it was me. wonderful. Mom it was didn't, the, mom the, didn't the, say I told Becky, that. but I hadn't had a chance to tell Shy yet. Lily, why don't you tell him while I'm watching? So what? um I she what? sent me uh on behalf of all three of us. On behalf of everybody. I'm gonna get once a week for the next year, once a month, once a week, once a week, once a week for the next year, a question that I answer and it goes into this program and at the end of the year a book will be put together with all my answers. So you got homework for I have a homework whole year every week. Homework? A whole year of homework. But so it's like your really, mother. Did you hear what mom got Allie for Mother's Day? No. A bowl. Like a cereal sized bowl. No, no, it's like bigger than cereal. It could hold nachos. You, did she didn't like it? No, she mm. loved it. I'm teasing Lily. Oh. This is I got you a bowl for Mother's Day. Look at that. Years ago, and I've never I lived it down. Do you remember Lily got you that blue bowl with, with the potpourri, potpourri that lived in the country house, and, and you hated it? And you were <laughs> I didn't hate it. I loved it. Them. It was in the bathroom of the country house, and we're still talking about it today. <laughs> so, so jokes on who? Purple bowl. What color was it? Blue. Because <laughs> <laughs> Chai already said blue bowl. And it had potpourri in it. <laughs> it smelled like orange. It was so good. You're welcome. Um, I think Mother's Day gifts are so special. They're wonderful. Shy got me. No, thank a you, massage. Lily. That, yes. That's, oh shit! That's, I that's didn't nice. get a massage. I'm I getting. Didn't, I didn't get a massage either. You afford your own massages. <laughs> <laughs> you can afford your own. <laughs> Amazing. You, know you got your cold open there. I-